Hey guys, welcome to Under the Post. We're just kids talking about footy. Today we're talking about the 2024 preseason week one. Hi, I'm Audrey. I'm Mason. And I'm Sam. The first game we're talking about is the Thursday, February 15th game, Bulldogs vs Storm. What do you think of this? I think it'll be a good game with all the Bulldogs new signings. Um, I think the Storm may struggle without the uh, without Justin Ollum, but I think they'll um, keep it up in Storm 24, Bulldogs 20. What about you, Cobb? Uh, well, based on like last year, I'm going to have to say the Storm will win this one probably by 10 points because, you know, like the Bulldogs do have signings, but their board hasn't really changed. So I'm going to say Storm on this one. Me, personally, I think it could be a new era for the Bulldogs. Look, they've got all those new signings, Stephen Crichton, Blake Taft, etc. Against the Storm, I mean... We know the storm, they're just unstoppable. But it'd be interesting to see if they put their young guns up first. So, you reckon Bulldogs? so I reckon Bulldogs up first. Yeah. First shot. Really? Yeah. Um the next game, there's a few games on this day. Saturday, February fifteenth, um, Knights vs Sharks. Um for me, I think the Sharks are gonna pull this one off. I don't see the Knights getting a win. I think Sharks will take this one probably pretty high score. 20 to 10 ish. Yeah, I'm going to say, I'm going to actually say the Knights will win this one. Saw them last year. Um, they were pretty season. good. I'm going to say probably like by six points. And we've got a Cronulla the, fan. Oh. I, me personally, I'm a Sharks fan, but over the years I've been looking at the Knights' young guns coming through. And they played a bit of first grade footy last year. And if they shine through this preseason, I reckon they might have a good shot up against the Sharks who. Haven't really been able to just gone to the next level, but I think Sharks will just put their young guns on and Knights will get over the top. New another game, uh, Roosters versus Manly. I think it'll be a very close game as well. I think the Roosters are going to take this one out. They've got um, Dom, Young, Dom Young as a new signing. I don't know how well it'll do, but I think we'll get a few tries in. So I think Roosters are going to take the top over Manly. I'm going to go with Manly on this one, and I'm going to put a strong bet on it. I, I bet on it. Um, because, you know, we ju- they just like Tom Trebojevic is back, so is Jake Trebojevic. They've got a strong back line, DCE and Luke Brooks. I'm going to go Manly by four. Yeah, Mason, you're right. It'd be really interesting to see Luke Brooks in action for the Seagulls if he does play, if they do put their stars on first up, because normally in preseason they go second. But I think the Roosters had a lot of injuries over the past two years. Yeah. Um, see those guys coming back, the young guns showing their talents, um, just to see what the Roosters are like. So that would be very good. So I reckon. Manly might just get over the top, seeing how well they did in pre-season last year yeah. too, and their new talent that they've got. Yeah. Next game is the Eels versus the Raiders. This could go either way, if the Eels start well or if they start bad. It just depends how it starts. But um, I'm going to go with the Raiders on this one, but I think it would definitely be very close, um, depending on how the teams both start. But I think, yeah, definitely Raiders for this one. Well, I'm going to go based on last year, I'm going to say the Raiders, but with the Eels, I've had a few player swaps and that. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to go Eels by two. Close game. Well, I reckon the game will go down to the wire, seeing Raiders new signings, Kyle Weeks, Xavier Savage coming back, the young gun, and they've got a pretty good junior system up there in Canberra, so they could have some really good players. But with the Eels, I don't know, they're pretty experienced. So I think they might just get over the top, maybe Golden Point even. And last game for the Saturday is the Dragons versus Rabbitohs. Very fierce rivalry. Charity Shield. And I think I think the Dragons, I am going to say Dragons on this one, but Dragons have got a lot of new signings. Could go very well or very bad. But I do think that the Dragons may go just on the top. Very close game as well. Probably about, like, I think Dragons win by about four. That's that's my that's my tip. I'm going to say, yeah, well, we've got two Dragons fans here. But 
unbiased, I'm going to say the Dragons, just because, you know, new head coach, Shane Flanagan, yeah. he'll do a lot. Do well. Sharks, like, last time he coached, won a premiership. New signings, Harmo Sele in the front line and Kyle Flanagan at six. A pretty good choice, but I'm going to go Dragons by six. Yeah. Well, for me, personally... I reckon Dragons, new start, new beginning, all those new signings. New head coach, Shane Flanagan. Really interesting to see how they go. Kyle Flanagan there too. New, a lot of new forwards. See how they go with their new connections. See if they'll play in this first game. Along with a uh, turning, uh, a signing that was just announced today. Um, Tui Pilotu's actually going there. Is he? Oh, yeah. Today. I didn't see that one actually. Yeah, oh, and so he's going. I reckon that'll be really interesting, and Rabbit I think they'll just get over the top. But the Rabbitohs, good to see all those young guns like we saw Jack last year. Jack Wyden, I yeah. think I heard that he's not playing, but um, also Tyron Munro, I was talking about him today. He's amazing. Um, he's pretty good. Good to see him on, on show. Uh, yeah, so all gone dragons for that one. Yeah. So, uh, new signings. Obviously, just as we mentioned before, there's a lot of new signings that we definitely need to talk about. Some that we did not see coming. Some that we thought, yeah, definitely. But, yeah, there's... I mean, this one was pretty big for a little while. Uh, the Luai to the Tigers. Yeah. I think that he he'll... Really miss him. I think the Panthers would definitely miss him. And I think that um, he'll do well at the Tigers. But I just, I just don't see him doing... Who were I just don't see them doing well. Um, I mean, they've just signed Luai and they did uh Sullivan. I just I don't know, that's too hard. They did but wipe their whole board out though, they're doing like full board, yeah. I don't know, especially it's, could go either way. Could go I either way. personally think Luai made maybe just was looked good playing against up, up with the best half back in the comp, yeah, almost the best. Best back one. See how he goes on his own. So see how he goes. Yeah, with, Luke with Brooks the worst has gone team. for Manly. That's another one. Um, but it could be it could be fifty fifty. Could go really well. Could go really bad. Of course, but. I'm bringing this up. But Adam Fanua Blake oh. going to the Sharks from the Warriors. Straight from the Dragons' hands. Um, that's so really interesting. Sad. Yeah. Taken. Um, um, that were, would. That's kind of what the Sharks needed. Bit of a booster yeah. in their forwards line. Good to see him. Not this year, but next year. Um, along with that new union player, um, Mark Watsky. Mark Na Na Wala Yeah. That's how I'm going to say it. Um, yeah. He is such a crazy winger. I have watched Union for for a very long time. And I think the Australian rugby team and the Waratahs are going to miss him. But I think he's going to do really well in league. I think that's definitely a good opportunity for him. And I think he'll do quite well uh, with the Sharks, you said. Going to the shop, right? Roosters. Roosters. Sorry, Roosters. Um, I think it'll do well. But it'll be also very good to see Sawali. He hasn't really hit that extra level of what everyone's been saying. Next year. So Going to I reckon well. it'll be good to watch him this year for the Roosters. And as a man, like they just signed some five yeah. year. So I think yeah. I mean Ezra Man is just a crazy player. He's just gonna he's gonna rise um, as he goes, but I think, yeah, he, he'll do quite well. As, I mean, he's already done well. Um, but I think that'll be... That's a good re-sign for the Broncos there. His so. energy is just crazy. So, I reckon I that that grand be, final, which yeah. is crazy. Him, Look, the Warriors have had... Last year was their probably their best year in... in a while. Probably a, a decade. Time. Yeah. Since they made that grand final. Um, Shane yeah. Johnson, if he keeps his consistency, they're going to be another, like... Up the top of the ladder again this year. Um, that spine fullback Nico Cook's dad, three yeah. or two of he's, us are Sheck. He's been good. Um, I think two of us are Sheck is playing on the wing, so that will be good to see. Wing or center, he'll be playing. Yeah. And then Five, their four eight would be all the Warriors. Well, last year they had who they have last year. I think they had Luke Metcalf. Luke Metcalf. Yeah, he so was he, amazing. He can be good. Like, Sean Johnson at seven. He's coming through the ranks if he can step up that extra notch. Also, Sean Johnson, their forward pack as well. Um, and Fanua Blake, if he can. But his last, last year, year, 
if he can keep the consistency up, even though he doesn't really want to be there, obviously looking for that release. Um, if he can play that same role he played last year, leadership too. Yeah. Um, that'd be good. Uh, Tohu Harris as well. Captain. Yeah, captain. Yeah. He needs to step up. I don't think many people notice him, but I was watching um NR. I think it was NR 100% footy. Phil Gould said Tohu Harris was really underrated last mm. year. Um, Wade Egan as well. Good dummy half. Yeah, yeah, he's underrated. He has a great pass on him. Good defence. Great, yeah. great skill. Good leadership. So, yeah, Warriors versus Tigers. The tip. I'm going to go Warriors probably by 20, 20 more. Interesting to say the Tigers, if Adam Dewey does play. Um, That's right. Yeah. Seeing their new signings, um, Aiden Caesar, their new half combination. If they can shine through, obviously, after losing Luke Brooks, that's a big one. They don't yeah. want a third wooden spoon in a row. I think no, they'll be yeah, really determined that. to avoid that. Yeah, I so think. So, yeah. the turning point there would be a good start, don't you think? Good? Yeah, I think Tigers really push. are probably going to um, push as much as they can. Um, but I just think the Warriors are definitely going to come out on top for this one, this game here. Yeah. Um, but as we know, pre-season can be completely different to regular season and same with into the finals. Like if you make the finals, you can play completely different to what you played pre-season and regular season. But I think the Tigers will do it's not too bad, but I still think the Warriors will come out on top. It'll be hard to figure out like base first game of the year. Yeah, well we yeah. saw how tight it was last year. Like the competition, anyone could beat anyone. Yeah. Up the top. The Tigers Tigers beat, had a beat, great yes. game and then like up, I think 17th beat first one game and then yeah, it's just insane. all over the shop. Like I, people have been saying that last year was the hardest one to predict. Yeah, definitely. Well, right. things that were happening. So I reckon Frank, Warriors get over Tigers. Yeah. Um, Seeing every all the events that have been happening with the Tigers. And yeah, so Warriors getting over top. If they do play their seniors, maybe, maybe not. Yeah. Um, yeah, but for me, Warriors. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Next I'm game, kind of the same with Warriors as yeah. well. Cowboys versus Broncos, a bit of a Queensland rivalry. Yeah. What do we reckon? Of? Uh, Broncos have lost. Um, obviously Herbie Farnworth. Um, I haven't heard of any sightings from either of them except Reece signs. I think the Broncos are probably going to come out on top with this one. I think they're just if pretty determined Adam for this one. Adam Reynolds has an injury Adam for Reynolds, season. Yeah. That's going to be big. Yeah, just uh, yeah, injuries change the game completely. Um, but I do think the Broncos will come out on top, maybe by about a try to try. So interesting. Yeah, ten points. Maybe. Say if the Broncos do show their future talent. I mean, they had that much depth last year too. That that could be playing mm. Tristan Saylor, one of them. Wendell's yeah, yeah. son. Could be very good. Played for Dragons, I think. Plays for Broncos. Played yeah. for Dragons. Oh, yeah, I think he might have. And, yeah, so good to see him on show if he does mm. play. And also the Cowboys' new talent coming up. Tom Chester. Tom all Dearden those. re-signed, I think. Tom Dearden re-signing. Yeah, see if their senior boys will play as well. Yeah. Um, before I get into my team, I just want... We've seen Adam Reynolds has had a pretty, like, in the off-season, big run with injuries. Yeah. Frank, what do you reckon how that will like affect? Do you reckon he will? Um, I don't think he'll play first up. I mean, I reckon he'll play the second preseason game. Like as we saw last year, not really in the first preseason round. A lot of senior first grade players yeah. play a lot. Their junior but, players. But yes, yeah, they show their junior talent. And yeah. Yeah. So it's a good chance for the juniors. I mean, to show, the, yeah. show what they can do and hope to get in that yeah. team. and then hopefully get a glimpse of them in this mm. pre-season and then hopefully, hopefully watch them play first grade later on. Yeah, yeah. But for I mean, me, there's a few guys that might even... Broncos on top, yeah. they just, I've seen better talent from them, future talent as well. I'm yeah. going to say this one is, I mean, it's pretty talent. I'm going to say it's a close game. Mm. Cowboys will want to step up from last year. You know, everyone yeah. expected them to go really well way. after the year they had in 2022, but then they yeah. missed the eight. So I'm going to say... I'm actually going to go Cowboys by yep. six on that one. Yeah, I think it'll be going back and forth between the lead throughout this game, and I think the last ten minutes will make it all. Yeah, who wins and who loses. All right, Dolphins versus Titans. Uh, <sighs> Audrey. I mean, it's a tough game. 
Dolphins yeah. Sonics too. Yeah, Dolphins I think Sonics. Dolphins will probably take this one out on top. I think the Titans are probably going to try and be pretty wanting to win. Um, obviously, yeah, I couldn't find the word. Um, I think the Titans haven't had, they have not had great seasons over the past few years. So I think they're really going to want to try and step up this year. Des Hasler. Um, De Good yes, to see what Des Hasler, Des Hasler I mean, does with Tino, that first game. Talk about Tino with a 10 year deal. Like, that's we've just... seen many halves combinations over the last years from the Titans. Mm. Good to see some new people there. Jaden Campbell, maybe. Jaden Campbell. Oh, oh, potentially, yeah. That AJ Brimson. Brimson, yeah. for me, Brimson fullback. Mm. Campbell 5'8". Yeah, that's what I think. Just that extra energy that... Cam will play his natural game and yeah. Tanner Boyd to take over that game management at halfback. Yeah. With the key and then to step up and be more. Be that, take leader. that extra notch, go take that extra step like we were talking about before. Yeah, but uh, I mean, I still yeah. think that I still think the Dolphins will take it out on top. Um, I mean, they've got a few new signings. Obviously, I think that'll really help them through the win. But I do think it's going to be another close game, probably back and forth. But I'm going to go with the Dolphins on this one. Obviously, Dolphins, Dolphins, second year in the comp. Yeah. Could you say some new I mean, their junior talent last year. that they have? Their season last year was so amazing. I did not expect yeah, them to go so season. well. I Good mean, their first year. So I think their second year, they're going to try and really push through and get, the, get into the top eight at be, least. It'd be good to see some of their depth too. Because um, yeah. we don't know much about them. No. Yeah, no. Not at all. They're only the juniors. Yeah. Um, personally, my for this game... Well, Dolphins, 13th last year, better than everyone expected to, them to go. Way better. I think in our ladder prediction, we put them last, maybe. No, I think we put them maybe like 15th because of yeah. the signings yeah. they had. But yeah, that, put start, them low. that start was insane. Mm. Being the Roosters win three games, I think it was, in a row. Yeah. Um, on the other hand, the Titans, last year, towards the end of the season, I think they stepped it up. Yeah, they did. Like a little, a little bit. A lot of so, because they wanted to win... This game, I'm gonna go Titans, um, by eight. By eight, yeah. Yeah, I'm just just because you know the Titans, well, the young guns, Brinson, Campbell, that spine is insane. Mm, yeah. yeah. With the fullback five eight. I think it would be very good. I would like to see the Dolphins get up, showing their new talent. Yeah. Showing their showcase. All I'd that. like to see. I, I don't I, think it'll I, happen. I, I think it will happen. I reckon Dolphins get up by. Y6. Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, that's the last game. And then new rules. New so rules. we've got the dropout rule. It's not a penalty if it goes out on the full anymore. It's a uh, play the ball on the 10. Play the ball, yes, for the other 10. Yeah, I reckon I do think definitely that's some. probably better. I mean, the penalty, I think that was a bit harsh. So. Well, for me, yeah. that brings in a new aspect of the game. Well, yeah. more excitement, more challenge for the ball. Off dropouts, I think we'll start seeing a lot more grubber kicking game. Mm. Yes, definitely. Five eights, I reckon, needs to step up there and like take some more kicks. Like, yeah, grubbers. Um, we've seen Nathan Cleary's obviously banana kicks. Like you need to be prepared. Um, yeah, the new rule. Yeah, I think it's a pretty good yeah. one. I, I would, think it's I rate it. good seeing I rate more it. kicks mm. come into the game and I think a lot more dropouts. That team I think will be win. happy and take the risk on. I think it'll definitely change the game a little bit in the in the kicking part of the game. Um, I think it'll definitely change it and just good to see the new holes as well step up. Take then we'll really get to see their kicking game this year. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Other ins, new rules. Ins and outs. Ins and outs. Yeah. I'm gonna say an out for me. I want to get rid of the rock infringements. Like, like they're not. Really well, it does need to keep smooth, in my opinion. Yeah. That. You can't just have silly stuff. Like, that's just discipline. Like, you're playing top-notch NRL. Like, yeah, you're yeah. a professional for, yeah. as your it's job. National you, Rugby League. Like, yeah, you've got to be, on like, point. on your ball. On point, on the ball. Yeah, like, you can't be doing stupid mistakes that just give away the penalty in the 40. It just releases the pressure. Like, that's just, just minim minimum. Um, yeah. Okay. okay. I think everyone will agree with this one. The hip drops. Hip drops. There. Out. Out. As in, yeah, as in the that's calls, just, that's just the in the game. Out. You shouldn't just do it. Yeah, yeah. Like, but like, no, but sometimes, like, sometimes I'm talking about like if the referees just... calling those awful like tackles from behind. If to stop a try, yeah, true. If those you are, yeah. if you're taking a tackle and you hit and you are, you pick them up 
and you like flip them over, penalty, straight up, like nothing there. But I think if, I mean, that tackle uh, by Stephen Crichton against Cameron Munster in the State of Origin, I think that's like on the brim of penalties. Like, I mean, it was a pretty hard tackle, but I think that's like the brim of penalties. I just, well, yeah. the game's getting soft, saw, honestly. In Origin, when Daly Terry Evans chased down Stephen Crichton, I reckon because it was a big game, that in a normal game of NRL would have been called a hit drop. But yeah, because it was yeah. a big game, stop a try, and it was state versus state, it that's, wasn't called. That's the thing. In my opinion, Origin, refs, and the crowd especially played a big part. Just yeah. when the game keep going, a ref yeah. calls the penalty and just stops it, the it's, play. Yeah, it's, the beauty of Origin footy is the toughness, the roughness. And a ref, what and that's what that's what ends. I want to start seeing in regular NRL games. Like that's what I want to see too. The game, just, I mean, some people are going to disagree, some people are going to agree. The game is getting soft. Yeah. yeah. Like I and think something we need is just that extra push of just bang. Like you just make a massive hit and the crowd goes wild. They're like, yeah. whoa! Like that's I think that's something we need in games way more often. I just it gets the crowd going down a bit, and then. Down a bit. And the game's getting and it faster. Keeps the, yeah, it brings it brings it up. Um, the crowd goes wild, and then well, the, it was the only players probably, get pumped up, and it's just it was probably only like I don't know, maybe six years ago when you were still allowed to shoulder charge. Yeah, that, that's only a new thing, and I think that you're doing it like blatant to the head on purpose, trying to knock them out. The yeah, go. but like that's there's just different stupid. again just, discipline. Yeah. The game's getting faster. You need to cut that off. Like there's different if, ways of. What if I'm you're saying. hitting them on the shoulder in like I don't know, say here, that should be fine because they're that's not really doing motive. any damage. It's just a normal hit. Yeah. Stupid penalties like discipline that cost teams the game last year. I remember watching games. I was just like, you idiot. Why would yeah. you do that? It just loses the game for the team. Last mm. last ten minutes gives away that forty meter penalty because there's no six against inside that yeah. forty meter penalty kick for touch. They're in in, in the position yeah. to drop. So that was probably nine times out of ten they'll score a try or kick goal. This and is another thing defense. about being a bit rough. I mean, I know I feel like a lot of people are probably going to disagree with me here, but honestly, something I would love to see is. Pushing in scrums. Yes, I think that that'll needs just to come back. I think that's a lovely thing that'll just well, not lovely, but I think that's a great thing that'll just push that game that extra bit. I mean, and if you push it in the scrums, the it. other team can take the ball back and it can just change the game completely. I, think I just they think that's so. because there were neck injuries. But let's be honest. I think come on, the like, game is getting does it. Yeah, obviously, and you, you watch it the most. So you I, know I, I, I how many it, injuries yeah. in scrum pushing. Like, Not many, because, well, there's a thing, there's a safety thing, and it's called Mayday. Even in regular top super rugby games, national games, if you yell out Mayday, the scrum will stop. Everyone in the scrum knows it, that it'll just stop, yeah. and the ref will say, are you okay? They'll take you out, whatever, and they'll reset it. And yeah. that's it's good. Just, it's, that needs it's to be something that pushes that game, and it can change the game at any moment. You could be at the five, have a scrum, and not have the ball, and it's on your try line. And you push and get the ball back, you can be in for a try and change the score of the game just like that. That's like, what I needs to be something... implemented in NRL. Like, they need to stop being so babyish. Over. Yeah, on, like, like, honestly, come on. Like, these stupid calls. Milking, is, milking, penalties. milking. Like, it's like, well, then you get a bit more harsh. turning into soccer right now. A bit more harsh. But, come yeah. on. Yeah. Like, and they, you don't even touch them, they go to the ground, fake. Good to, it'd be good to say the fast old game, what we used to say. Um, obviously, but not, maybe not us, but our parents, parents. Not, highlights. But like, yeah, the old yeah. game, get it rough, get it quick, get it moving again. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. We watch highlights, Mal Meninga and stuff. They just yeah. get the ball out and bang. Like, they keep it moving. Yeah, big hits. It's yeah. awesome. We need One back. other thing that would be pretty fun for me is, this is a bit from N um, the NFL, is like colour rush jerseys. Yes. I just, when I'm watching the NFL, I love the... um. The color rush jerseys they're just they look so cool i think maybe like one week one game a week not one game a week one week of footy they just have like a color rush jersey and it's just so sick it just looks great but um i think me yeah. and frank have talked about this one a bit uh rivalry round yeah rivalry yes round. i'm i think we were going to make an edit and then it just got away from us yeah but definitely that would be so good Honestly, what would you like to see in rivalry round um, 
just a lot of more competition, more roughness, and like like we were just talking about yeah. bigger hits, better game, but I think new game plans. And could say new talent as well. I do think though, if we have a rivalry round, the person who or the team that would be on a bye is definitely the Dolphins for yeah. now because obviously two years in seasons, two years into the game. Maybe Tigers, Dolphins versus Broncos. Yeah, but I just think there's more rivalries um, excluding the Dolphins. So, but yeah, a rivalry yeah. round would be amazing. Bring be really yeah. Just playing definitely, yes. say Dragons and Sharks. Yeah. Like, they would just make it... Rabbitohs, Roosters. The crowd, get into it. Full I packed out. I can't believe they're not. I can't believe they're not. I can't believe they're not. Packed out, please bet. A, a call, 80,000. Imagine having believe. that packed out for an NRL game. No, not even green fun. Yeah, yeah. I, but I can't believe that in Vegas, they're not playing I'm Roosters, going. Rabbitohs. I'm I cannot believe they're doing that. Yeah. Like, I'm, how are you having the Roosters and the Rabbitohs go to Vegas to play the opening game and then not playing? Well, to I'm, each other. Like, I'm that, lucky. That, that's true. That's just. I'm lucky enough to be actually going to Vegas to watch the games, and I'm gonna say I reckon personally. I think what the Americans want to see, and I'll probably notice this while I'm there. Yeah. If they see Rabbitohs Broncos, two teams that don't really have much history. Yeah. Then they're just gonna be like, oh, this is pretty boring. If they see two teams going, whoa, what is this? These two teams really hate that's it. That's gonna bring in the viewers. That well, will bring in the viewers. Rivalry games. They just hit another level for me. Like yeah. it's just tougher. Teams hate each other. Yeah. Rougher. It's same as Origin, really. It's yeah. yeah it's so just yeah. Such good. Um, games, really good. Games, games of the, of the week. week. Game what do you week. reckon the game of the week will be, Frank? For me, I reckon that'll be the Sharks and the Knights. Could see some new, yeah. new talent. Um, yeah, just their young guns and going up against each other. Two very similar teams. Yeah, yeah. Um, Halen Ponga. This could be a good mm. year for the Knights. And yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think. Team. Um. Yeah. No. I think the probably game of the week is probably going to be. I mean, you may think I'm biased here, but Drag Dragons Rabbitohs. I mean, it's a rivalry. I think it's going to be a great game. So I think that's going to be a very close game as well. Um. But. Um, also, Dolphins Titans could be a good one. Queensland rivalry, same as the Brisbane and Brisbane Broncos and the Queensland Cowboys game. Yeah, I'm yeah. gonna. Um, let me look at these games. Huh. You've got the games on the sheet. Okay, so I'm gonna go Charity Shield, obviously. Yeah, yeah great. Ah, uh, toys. Roosters Manly. Oh yeah. I'm yeah, gonna say definitely. that's gonna be actually my game of the week because. I've watched them play each other before. So it was a close game down to the wire. Yeah, yeah. They're starting to build up a bit of a rivalry. East versus North. I reckon it'll be a great game. Yeah. I'm excited to watch that. Manly's yeah. a new big one too. Manly is massive. Right. And they will all really be great additions for the Broncos. And now let's talk about Dolphin signings. Yes, Hermie Farnworth is going to be possibly the best signing, I reckon, of the year. Because, well, we saw what he could do last year. I'm going to say... um. That he should have. Did he get center of the year? Um. I yeah, I think. Yeah. He, yeah. He definitely yeah. deserved it. He was like amazing. I think that he really boosted them. And Jake Avarillo as well. Yeah. Yeah. What do you reckon about that? Two great centers. That yeah. speed, the energy. Um. We saw what he did for the Broncos last year. Herbie Farmer, mm -hmm. incredible. And Jake Avarillo. The speed yeah. on him. I think he's pretty good. He's pretty versatile. Um, can play five eight half back yeah. if you really need it. Full back. Um, play anywhere. Full back. Like yeah, he did. He did do a little bit of moving around at the Bulldogs. Yeah. For a bit, but I think game. um, hopefully he'll just stick to the one position. Yeah, I think it'll be better if he just sticks to one position. I think he'll be able to grow a lot more in that position. And yeah. Then Tom Gilbert, I think it is. Yeah. Yes. That would. Yeah. That'd be a great. Time. Yeah. That's a great. Right, Tom Flegger. Tom Flegler? Yeah, it was Tom Flegler as well. Um, he's gone there. He's a big boost. He played for the Broncos last year. He was really, really good. Just a great enforcer. Played, I think, a couple he's games a for Queensland too. Front row. Crazy. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, next, I'm going to say Panthers. Have they signed anyone? Um, they yeah, I think anyone. they have re-signed Dylan Edwards. Um, yeah. Yeah, he's really that good. And also, who else did they re-sign? Well, also really letting good. letting go of the white That's and Stephen Crichton and Stephen, Stephen Crichton, two big losses. Two big lo yeah, I'm gonna I make a call. I'm gonna say they don't win the comp this year. Yeah, really? I honestly, I think I think they'll still be 
quite well, they'll, but they'll make finals. They'll they've lost. Them. Yeah, I think they'll make finals, and then Salt Lakes to. I think they might lose to someone up there as well, like the Broncos or even hopefully the Warriors can go yeah. as That'd far be... as they went last year. That was a very That's good. More. That was a very good. Yeah, Sean um, Johnson. Thing. If he can continue his form, yeah. so can Nathan Cleary. If Nathan Cleary can be... keep his consistency up. Yeah. That'll be a good show. I think uh, to I need to know who do you reckon will go into five eight for the Panthers. Panthers. Jack mm. Cogger. He I signed the Knights. Yeah. He goes the Knights. Yeah. So twenty twenty five. Not sure. Actually, I think Dane Laurie did sign that with is, the that's Panthers. True. Yeah. Um, that he right. could potentially play five eight or that fourteen role, but it's not till twenty twenty five. So they might have another look at signing a five eight, or yeah. if they've got someone in there. Junior. I think Junior um, though Nathan Cleary will definitely have to step up a lot. I mean, like as we saw him do in the the grand final, he just absolutely went crazy at those last twenty minutes. That last try. That last that was yeah. just crazy. I think if he does that for the entire season, I think the Panthers will be all right without the two blokes without. Uh, Stephen Crichton and um, Jerome Luai, but I think they'll definitely take that loss quite deeply. Obviously, oh. Jerome Luai still there this year, so that's, that's, that's true. Try. That's that, true. We'll see if they can build a better connection. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the Bulldogs signing spree. Um. Yeah. So plenty of utility. Kurt Mann. Oh, um. I've just been on insane. Um. Uh, Drew Hutchison. Stephen Blake Crichton, Tuff. Crichton, obviously. Yeah, lots obviously, of players. And, but lots Ross and Cherry coming back as well after that. Yeah, that so is four year band? Was that four year band? It was four years. Four yeah. years band. Played for Sharks. You'd think now <laughs> that the Bulldogs could maybe step it up a bit, step it up that extra notch. Yeah. From what they have. I mean, their coach, that's the big part, I reckon. And their back line is going to be absolutely coaches, amazing. There's no excuses this year, now in their players. Their back line Still is there. just crazy this, this year. I don't see if, he, if they are not doing well this season, I, that's, that's just poor. I reckon that's, that's, on, poor I reckon that's on Cameron Sonato, the coach. Yeah, if yeah. they, if this back line, I mean, what, you've got, you've got Matt yeah. Burner 5'8", yeah. you play 5'8", you've got Fox on the wing. Fox on the wing. You've and got then you've got Pride in that. Pride in the Fox centres. If Kynes, well, that's a big question. But Will Kynes play fullback or... Center. Well, I think he's going to play fullback. I really I'm think they need him in the centre. I think they might play Blake Tower for fullback. Well, we saw Hayes Perham there too last year. Well, I want to see Blake Tower get more playing time. I think he's a really underrated player. Yeah. Really yeah. Good. Saw him in 2021, that final mm-hmm. series when LaShawn Mitchell was banned. Yeah. It was insane. Well, um, there'll be a bit of competition for spots in the Bulldogs team. I mean, there is plenty, plenty of, of players, depth. Yeah. Plenty of depth. Plenty. Uh, Titans, Des Hasler. There's us off. Whoa, that could be what a new need. beginning. Tino, what they need. I reckon yeah, Tino they just need a big marquee <laughs> halfback. Yeah. Mm. Yep. Yeah. After letting Tanner Boy does the job, they've got a lot of young players too. Yeah, Tanner Boy does the job, but when he's on the goes next to the, the next notch. Um, we'll see you next week. And uh, next week on the show, we are going to be looking at obviously preseason week two. Um, those games, what our tips are going to be. Um, obviously, what our, we think our, the game uh, of the week is going to be. The ga- uh, the, we're going to be talking about the games from week one. Yeah, what As well, happened? what happens, that's going to be probably one of the first things we do. And then we'll take our tips and whatnot. And comment down below if you want to see anything else. Um, new segments, anything you want us to talk about. Any new about. segments, just put them yeah. in the comments and we'll listen, we'll, we will listen I'll, I'll to the We'll reply to everyone. Potentially yeah. even a shout out. Yeah, potentially, potentially a yes. shout out. Just comment, right. comment done or something. Yeah. Thank you Thanks, for guys. watching Under the Post. See ya. Oh, that was voice. pretty that was, that was, I, I, I yeah, to do editing. Oh. Yeah, right. There's a lot of editing. Right. Oh, we'll do editing together now. Yeah. That's why we have, we have Wait, so much fun. Wait, let's use my